What's up guys, it's your boy John, back again with another video. Today we're taking a look at the Android 8.0 Oreo and what kind of latest features that something like this brings to the table in 2018. I'm glad to get it. What does perfect even mean? Let's look at the user interface from the home screen to, you know, notification bars and like that. So, this is the laundry it comes with. Very basic, very clean, kind of like the... Um, just the icons are a little bit more easier. They're a little bit more squared. Um, but other than that, it looks very similar to the old unit. Here is the settings menu again. Very similar. Um, can't really tell. There is new, new things like the settings, how things are more grouped together, like networks and internet connected devices. So the settings are a little bit more easy to read, but not too much change. The notification bar is a little bit cleaner, but the font is a little bit better. Um, as far as performance, it is super snappy, just like the original one. So I'm not gonna say that, hey, this one brings a lot more speed. It's very similar in speed to the old one, except um, just things are a little bit more cleaner and a little bit more optimized, I would have to say. And with the user interface being a little bit cleaned up, especially in the settings, because in the home, the launcher, it all depends on what kind of launcher you use. And if you like this style, go, go, go for it. All right, so let's not talk about the apps that are built in. Let's, let's see what happens when you hit navigation. With navigation, it, does, it has nothing preset to it. Uh, generally, the navigation you want to use is iGo. So it's going to be loading. And then it's going to look for a GPS signal and stuff like that. So yes, it's working. And you can check, uh, it is 3D. I don't know how you guys can see that text. So let me adjust the camera settings a little bit. Oh yeah, so it's very bright, this, this screen right here. Yeah. With the, with the new 8.0 and the octa-core head unit, 3D rendering is a lot smoother frame rates per second. You can see the frame rate is actually really smooth. Um, and uh, older units like the quad-core might have to struggle with at least graphic, graphically intensive stuff like this. Um, but yeah, this thing is just breezing right by and um, it does take a second to load, but compared to other things and how much stuff that is going on right here, this is a really nice unit. Uh, so that's the um, that's the GPS. You also have 2D, which is kind of cool. Let's look at the radio app and see what kind of features it has in the radio. Oh, that thing slaps loud. Anyways, you have your radio. This is if you're very familiar with Android 8.0, 7.1. These are all very similar radio. I like the aesthetic of it. It's very clean, very easy to use. You have your tuner up here, and then you can have presets, as well as search functions. If you want to seek what kind of uh, available station, this is actually now going to change all of my radio presets, uh, which I don't want it to do. But if you want to do like a new FM2, which is the FM2 presets, you can do a quick search, see what kind of um, It'll basically occupy every single preset it runs into. This is, uh, I believe, like stereo or something like that. And then um, more stuff like that. Tags and things like that. Of course, I want to have that. So we'll keep it like that. And it shows metadata information, which is kind of cool. A lot of cool things you can do. So there's a lot of features, AF, TA, PTY, things like that. So the radio app, no complaints. It sounds good. No HD radio. Uh, and no satellite radio too. You have to download an app for that. I don't really use radio, but I can see the appeal from that. Uh, here's the music app. I actually don't have any songs in here, but here it is. Let me see if I throw in a... I'm not sure if I have any songs in this 64 gigabyte micro SD. See what happens when you plug in an SD card. Nothing. So there's no songs in here anyway, so it's not detecting anything. Bluetooth. This is how the Bluetooth app looks like. You have uh, it, this one defaults to pretty much your radio, uh, not your radio, but your phone, things like that. 
and uh, whoever called me. So that's what, how it looks like. You can actually import your contacts as well, get that information in. Settings we already looked at. Mm, looks like there's already things popping up in the widgets, kind of cool. A steering wheel does con work, control work, so you can see me kind of messing with the steering wheel controls right here. Video, um, if you guys want to see how that looks, it looks like this. Very basic Bluetooth. This is probably what you're going to use a lot if you have your phone hooked up to it. So. I was charging my phone and I was watching some unbox therapy. So um, yeah, just place it through here and then place it through here if that's what you're into. Let's not do that though. All right, so next off, file browser. Basically a file system for your Android head unit. You can go through and move objects, move folders and files and to other directories like that. DVR, if, if you have a USB camera, which I don't have, you can plug a USB camera into here and then you can use it as a dash cam monitor information like that. AVN is, let's hook, say if you hooked up a PlayStation or a dash cam, not a dash cam, but a front camera, rear camera. That's what I like to do and I have it kind of set up like that. Um, that's cool. Easy connection. Let's see. Let's see if this actually works. There's a bunch of options with the Easy Connect. You can connect it through USB. For you to have this to work, you have to download this app, and then you can basically mirror your screen over. Um, let's say you're on Instagram or something on your phone and you wanted to show something. You can do that with this unit, which is kind of cool. It's kind of like Apple CarPlay if, in a way, if you want Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. So that is possible. All right. so. There is wheel key study, which is how you map your steering wheel controls. It's pretty simple. If you press a button on your steering wheel, it will automatically detect. I just clicked it. And then you can do, you can select your settings, what happens when you hit the phone button. You can also adjust what you happens when you do the long press. So if you long press it, let's say you said, I want to open the microphone. If I long press it, and then you can save your settings right there. Kind of nice. Let's do the hang up button. And then when I hit the hang off button on my steering wheel control, let's say I want to hang up. If I long press it, uh, let's do a mute. There you go. Let's save it. So I got my volume up, volume down. If I long press the hang up button, mute is on. And uh, if I long press it, it turns off and on. So that's really cool. You can get really customizable, kind of like any, if you're used to keyboard macros and hotkeys, it's very simpler, simple. Next off, let's go to amplifier. What kind of things we have here? Um, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11, EQ, balancer, whatever. You can turn on loudness and stuff like that. The sound quality sounds pretty good on my unit. I have upgraded speakers and an amplifier, so mm, it really makes the sound kick pretty good. Ooh, if you like to do math, or let's say you were at Starbucks and they're like, hey, can I get a venti coffee? And you're like, oh, that's two tiny 25 times, um, you know, more by five, 13 bucks. You can do sine, cosine, tangent. You got pi, we got the natural log, E, stuff like that, that's very cool. Clock, that's self-explanatory. APK installer basically installs AP applications. So if you need to install something, um, it comes with some applications here that they come pre-enabled pre into here. You got Torque, Bird, Wallpaper, Dab. So Torque allows you to monitor your, kind of like a Cobb Access port or kind of like a OBD2 reader allows you to do all that stuff and it's nice that it comes in with it now if it's pirated or you know legit copy and it's, it's, I don't know but it is there instructions acrobat calendar chrome gmail the list goes on this unit does have GPS like 
you saw earlier. So if you're saying, hey, my GPS antenna doesn't work, it's really easy to install the GPS antenna. It's literally like a screw and uh, you can't really miss it. It's huge. Instructions, I actually never seen instructions before. So let's see what kind of instructions they kind of show here. Mmm, look at that. Ooh. Intelligent operating, main menu operations. So let's kind of just go skim through this. Wi-Fi, you got 1.6 gig, uh, gigahertz or megahertz. <laughs> yeah, just kind of skimming through this. Very cool how they have documentations on this. Like some some guy really spent them time, and it's actually pretty well laid out. But again, this. All this stuff is very easy to use and pretty self-explanatory. Um, even installing it was just a matter of a plug and play. I actually have a video of me installing it. If you need help with installing it, you can click on uh, this little card right here and it'll show you guys how to um, install a unit like this. It's very easy. You don't have to hire anybody. And I just turned on my headlights, so that's why you see this this nice red hue. Now this light is actually adjustable if you're planning to uh, have a let's say if you have a Mustang or whatever car and the lighting is teal on a Mustang you can change this color to according to whatever color you have in your car interior in my WRX that's how it is maps play store this is the navigation car TMPS now this is if you have uh, if you buy the optional accessory you can monitor it each individual wheels tire pressure which is really nice um, yeah tire rotation mode you can see all the stuff it's very cool that something like this exists for this kind of platform Z box that's like some basically some binaries and some you don't have to worry about Z box now let's talk about a little bit things about the reverse camera the reverse camera is not plug and play so um, let me try adjust the camera so it's straight a little bit so the, the, the camera is not plug and play, but it is actually very easy to install. Um, there's clear labels on how to install it. So if you're looking to how to install it, it's pretty easy. Now my reverse camera is actually um, set up to be my rear camera, uh, my side camera. So when I throw the car in reverse, you notice that I actually had the side camera, which is showing whatever is happening over there. Um, yes, it does have the, my, the camera I bought has these little pre-built pre in lines, which is kind of, uh, but it's there. My reverse camera is up at the top. But yeah, so when I throw the car in reverse, it automatically turns the screen on. Again, it's very easy to wire. I don't think you guys have any issues with that. Now, when you turn off your car, it's gonna say power off shutting down unit and I have it set up for instant boot up pretty much if I turn on the car so let's say the car has been off for about 10 minutes in this case a few seconds uh, but if when you turn your car back on I'm gonna just put an accessory the system boots up and it instantly pretty much is back you're, you're ready for any action um, things like that. I have to have the car on to throw in reverse, of course. Now, the car when you throw your car in reverse, um, I have it powered through this. When you put your car in reverse, whether you're booting up or not, let's say your car is cold booted, uh, throwing in reverse will instantly turn it on. Now, you probably saw those artifacts. It's because my side camera, the way I have it installed is I have it wirelessly installed. So <laughs> that's another thing. All right, so that's all the interfaces applications. Let's talk about something different. Talking about it earlier, the performance. Now let's go to the settings. Let's look at what kind of thing is under the hood because the more horsepower you have, the better system. 
we want to know about the machine. So again, we're rocking with a PX5 resolution 1024 by 600. That is actually very sharp, so don't be like, oh, that's a low resolution. That's a very sharp screen, for, especially for a nine inch and you're sitting pretty far back. It's not like your cell phone screen, but it's, it's pretty clear. 8.0, CPU is an eight core, 64 bit CPU Cortex. 853, 1.5 gigahertz with four gigs of RAM. Now four gigs of RAM is plenty. I think that's as much RAM as something like on a modern day phone actually. So that's a lot of RAM you're playing with. That means you're a lot of multitask. You'd be able to run Waze, Pandora, Spotify and all that. I never have any issues with speed with this unit, especially on a hot day. Let's say when you're in the sun, you turn your unit. I really don't have any issues with speed because you know it gets kind of hot in the, like an oven. In your car sometimes and this thing handles it like a champ so speed wise very smooth very i mean it's all you need to do is play music and stuff i don't see why it's too intensive now the more intensive things is like gps like i showed you with those 3d graphics but honestly you're not gonna run into too many slowdowns especially if you're the type of person who just brings their phone in and just plays it through bluetooth let's say you just have you have your phone and you're just like i'm gonna just, you go to your car and just turn on Bluetooth and then you're just gonna be playing Bluetooth music. It's not a really big deal, you know? So there's that with it. Oh, so I was talking about speed and the speed is phenomenal. You're not gonna have any issues. And of course, um, when you're talking about other options when it comes to a car, there is, uh, this unit is a car head unit. So there's definitely car, base things like steering wheel amplification navigation so these are the car application stuff so elements no it's not a honda elements elements is the rgb functions of these lights so you can change into ooh, look at all these colors any color you want remember depending on how you want it to look like um yeah it's just there for you anything you like i'm gonna keep it red steering wheels we already touched on this stuff navigation we all already touched up on um, you can basically change your sounds depending on where you want your sounds to come off of and things like that so it's nice to have tailored things when it comes to navigation driver settings again do you want you be able to watch a video while you're driving have notifications blocked while you're driving and i had those checked marked because of course those are kind of distractions but also um Sometimes my passion likes to watch some videos, so I'll, I'll allow that and block notifications the less pop-ups the better right there extra settings Shut down delay when AC is off. So you have I have set to one hour your, your head unit can pretty much stay in sleep mode for depending on however long you want so auto sleep 30 seconds one hour um, That's basically when you turn off your unit and you turn it back on how fast do you want it to do a cold boot a cold boot is basically you know when you turn off your cell phone and you turn it on it takes like 30 40 seconds sometimes uh with my phone it's a little bit faster but it does take a while um it usually takes 20 seconds for the system to boot up from a cold basically off state now with the uh with this options you're pretty much able to sh have it in sleep mode just like your phone, that way when you turn it on, it wakes up very quickly. Play music when you have a USB automatically, reverse X mirror. So I have all these things on because um, this is gonna pertain to your backup camera. Going on to factory settings. Now, uh, I believe it's one, the number is one, two, six. Now you really don't have to go into this depth. So the, uh, now you guys know it's one, two, six. But um, this is another menu that's really advanced. I don't really touch any of this stuff. So if you're into that, then you can look at all this. The, the, the only reason why I see somebody going into this is if they're changing their logo. So again, when you're booting up your system, it does have an animation kind of like when you boot up a phone, it says like, it shows an apple in the middle and it boots up and lights up. This is the same thing with here. You can boot up to a Mitsubishi or, uh, you know, if you have a 5D Volition or something. I'm just kidding, WRX all the way. But um, Toyota, VW, and <laughs> your boy right now be rocking the Subaru. So we're gonna keep it on the Subaru. And that way and you can even have a custom icon let's say if you want to rep something else like a um, 
I don't know, let's say, what the heck, I have a McLaren, but there's no McLaren here. Maybe there is a McLaren in here. But um, yeah, you can put your own logo if you're into that. So a lot of customization features. So that's pretty much for the car settings. And the rest are pretty much anything you find on your normal phone, like sounds and key tones, whether if you want, when you, when you press something, it makes a beep noise. Now, personally, I don't like that, so I tab it off. And you can set up your notification sounds such like that. So, yeah, a lot of settings and features you can play with, which is kind of cool. So, let's conclude everything. This unit has been fast. It's been reliable. I haven't had any crashes or anything, especially in the hot, hot Sacramento, California weather right now. It's been 110 degrees here and there. Right now, I'm in the car. It says it's like 85, 90, and it's hot. I'm sweating. But with that, with all the hot and heat, you know, that really kills electronics. It hasn't been thermal throttling, and I haven't noticed it's such a decrease in performance or anything. It's very fast. Actually, the camera I'm using to record, the Sony A6500, it's actually saying my camera is too hot right now. It's not liking this, but of course, you can see right here, this thing is taking like a champ. So... Yeah, let me just play a YouTube video while it's, it's happening or something like that. Um, it's been quick. Uh, it's been fast. It's been reliable because this is the resolution you guys can see. So my camera's shooting 4K and you see the resolution. It's pretty much high definition. It's not 480p. It's higher than that. It's very clear for a head unit in a car. It's been amazing. So should you upgrade if you have the older head units like an Android? Now, if you have a 7.1, uh, 7.12, or something like that, everything is very similar. If you have the octa core compared to uh, the quad core versus the octa core, um, very similar. Of course, the octa core is a little bit faster. Um, and I had no issues with new applications or anything. So the octa core is here to stay, and it has pretty good 3D graphics and stuff like that if you're into gaming or anything like that. But gaming on your Android head unit on your car, that's what are you going to do? Play Pokemon Go or something? I don't even know if you, yeah, let's just not talk about it. Anyways, uh, yeah, so the performance have been really good when it comes to this. And uh, should you upgrade? For 7.1, I would probably say you might want to keep it unless you like um, just the 8.1 with the more security patches and fixes and stuff like that. Everything else would be very similar. Now, if you have the older Android hand units, like in your, if you're on KitKat 4.1, 4.4, stuff like that, then you definitely want to probably upgrade because you're going to have a lot more new features. Like, uh, there is a split screen, multitasking and things like that. Better security, of course. And it does feel very snappy compared to the older models. But, um, yeah. So if you have the older units, maybe something to consider. Now, if you have an OEM unit like my um, <laughs> my head unit from Subaru or Toyota or anything like that, now those units are very cheaply made. They're very, uh, I just don't like them. I had a lot of Bluetooth issues with my certain unit um, with the um, with the Bluetooth on here. It connects very fast and it's very snappy, and it actually sounds great with great metadata information. Now the OEM units, they kind of sound eh and they can definitely look like little calculators or the screen resolution is really bad and it's just not designed very well and it's very cheaply made. So if you have an OEM unit, if you have a Subaru OEM unit, Toyota, must you know, whatever, you definitely want to check in the Android head unit. At least look, um, look it up, see if you like it because this definitely wows everybody who goes into the car. So get an Android head unit if you haven't. I've been rocking these. It's my favorite mod in my car so i have a subaru wrx and i have mod everything in this car e85 you know downpipe cat bat headlights tail lights shift knob this that performance suspension wheel and this android head unit is my favorite mod in my car sure you know performance is great but every day dd seeing this compared to my old unit man i hated my old unit it looked like trash and it made my interior look like a subaru 90s 2000 interior now with this unit it makes it more modern up to scuff so looks are important to me performance wise it sounds great it's reliable it's faster and it connects to bluetooth a lot better than my oem unit so performance is better aesthetically it's a lot better and of course 
the price it's like three four hundred dollars like why would you not get some like this would you get a cat bag exhaust for a thousand or get something like this for 400 now you have to ask yourself what's more important to you for daily driving and stuff like that mm, this is my favorite mod i told you i modded the crap out of my car so that concludes it links below if you're trying to buy and here's some i'm gonna link some other alternatives if you want to buy something else but uh, that's my recommendation. This is my favorite mod on my car, the Android head unit. And is the 8.0 better than the other ones? Yes, it is better. Now, if you have the older ones, definitely you want to look into it. If you don't have an Android head unit at all, buy one and install it. It's easy. You don't have to pay Best Buy or any audio installer. You can do it yourself and that's key and it's fun when you do something yourself so please subscribe like and comment anything below and i will definitely help you guys out your boy got you okay all right peace out Woo!